Hej och välkomna till dagens webbinar. Jag vill börja med att kolla om ni hör. Så om ni kikar i er dialog så finns det en liten hand. Om ni klickar på den så räcker ni upp handen om ni hör. Ja, det ser bra ut. Då startar vi. Idag kommer webbinariet handla om automatisk uppregling av väggar i flera skikt. Så ni är välkomna till denna visning av produkten Mood Framing. Jag som presenterar nu heter Maria Runesson och är från ASC i Växjö. Och vi samarbetar med AgaCAD så Renata kommer att hålla själva presentationen och demon av Mood Framing Wall Plus. I i er webinar så finns det också tre stycken handouts som ni kan ladda ner. Det är om webbinariet idag och lite broschyrer kring produkten. Vi kan ta next slide. Vi kommer att, är vi ASC AB från Sverige och AGCAD från Litauen samarbetar nära i att utveckla BIM-verktyg för att öka hastigheten i processen kring BIM. ASC är guldpartner till Autodesk guldpartner och vi tillhandahåller kan BIM-lösningar för inriktning byggnadsindustrin. Och vi har över 25 års erfarenhet som återförsäljare av Autodesk produkter. AgaCAD som är från Litauen startade 1988 och utvecklar särskilt BIM-verktyg för just Revit. De har mer än 9000 användare världen över i 129 länder. Jag lämnar nu över här till Renata. Your turn, Renata. Okej, okay, thank you Maria. Uh, so today, during this um, uh, 45 minutes, um, I will try to show how to um, uh, work with our Wall Plus. Uh, it's um, um, a software which is which goes for multi-layered uh, timber walls, uh, making the sheetings and uh, shop drawings. And actually, uh, a few weeks ago, we have released a new version of the Wall Plus. So today, I'll try to show you. Uh, the new functionality and, and the new features which we added into this uh, version. So the webinar topics are how to design uh, complex uh, multi-layered walls and um, uh, also how to design and make uh, really complex uh, situations with uh, not just with the main frame but also using the secondary frames, vertical and horizontal nailers and, and the sidings. Um, at the same time, um, I'll show how to control uh, different window window or window door joints and um, how to make uh, sheeting layouts automatically and in the end how to generate uh, shop drawings. So in general, our all wood framing, um, it goes for design, analysis, documentation, fabrication and construction. Uh, it's very flexible because it allows you to make uh, different configurations and adapt uh, and according to your own company processes. Um, also, it, it has automated class detection and um, complete uh, shop drawing generation. And if needed, uh, all framing um, elements can be exported to CNC machine. So you can um, make the have the total process from design to uh, fabrication and uh, construction. Uh, now, if we talk about the wall plus only, uh, because our wood framing contains not just the wall plus, but also it contains uh, um, the software which goes for the, for floor generation and for the for the roof. But today we will focus mostly uh, only for the wall plus, so it um, uh, generates some. Um, it's very flexible and it's easy to use. So it uh, uh, generates uh, the timber wall frames and um, if needed, can, it can be exported to uh, CNC machines. So the main features are just that you can frame uh, really complex multi-layered walls uh, with different uh, supporting structures and uh, openings. You can 
uh, also use complex LNT connections, then distribute nailers, sidings, and fastenings. So also, you, you can even create a log house. Uh, then you can automatically distribute details on the studs and the plates. Um, then you can automate the sheeting layouts. Um, then you can make um, um, a link between the framing configurations and, and bearing and not bearing um, uh, walls. And you can very quickly align different uh, uh, studs from different uh, wall layers. So now I would like to switch to uh, the Revit. Uh, so uh, with framing, uh, you can find in the separate uh, Tools for Revit with Framing tab. And here we, today actually we will talk about uh, the Wall Plus. So we can just um, bring this, um, these options here. And um, uh, the first thing that you just need to start with um, uh, with architectural model. Let's start with really simple wall. Uh, this wall is just um, simple wall as it as you do uh, or as you create them in um, in Revit. Uh, so there is a layer uh, where we where we're going to add the main frame, and then there will be two sheeting layers from 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 the both sides. So it's like a simple uh, wall type with. Um, uh, three layers. And now uh, with the wall plus we have possibility to make a link between them uh, ev between every layer and the framing configuration. So here we're saying that uh, we're going to put the main frame into this layer and this configuration at the moment I'm going to use. And later we will talk about these configurations. Then I'm going to add sheetings from, from the both sides. And again, sheeting has its own configuration uh, because we're going to split the sheeting into the segments. So now I'm going just to frame this wall. And now the tool just um, looks into the wall type looks into the wall layer and uh, all at the same time it, it uh, takes uh, configuration settings and it frames uh, this wall according to my predefined configuration settings. And in this case uh, the windows and the doors are framed, uh, the details are automatically distributed between the studs, uh, some service holes automatically added, um, then also above them um, above every window or the door we have um, some additional uh, supports and um, also the tool analyzes if we have the door it puts uh, some different support. So this is one of the sample configuration which, which can be very easily um, achieved. Um, now let's just uh, go to the framing configurations and uh, let's make an overview what kind of configurations we have in the software and what you can achieve. So here you can just uh, choose uh, what exactly you are going to change. So uh, in this case, um, I was uh, choosing the main frame, but also you can go and select configurations only for the nailers uh, or for the sidings uh, or for the secondary frames or for the wooden logs. Um, because according to this configuration type, you will get totally different settings, um, which, which goes only for selected type. And if we have the frame, the main frame, Let's say uh, here you can find sample configurations where you can create your own configuration with predefined settings. And you just need to fill up these settings which are here down below. So under the common settings you just need to predefine what, what families you are going to use for the studs and for the plates. Um, also you have to add the mark definitions uh, for every element because this is also very important because this information uh, will be later used in the uh, shop drawings. Uh, then under the wall framing, you, you need to predefine what will be the distances between the studs, so what will be the top plates or the bottom plates, uh, what will be the scenario, uh, or maybe you would like to add some offsets from the wall, uh, top or base. Also, there are settings for the, separately for the windows and for the doors and for other openings. and. Um, Let's say if we're taking a look into the window configuration, so you can predefine the kinks, uh, also you can predefine uh, different types of headers, and um, actually uh, this is the header which was added into the new World Plus version, so this is a new type uh, which will be filled with the gaps between, between these um, horizontal plates. Okay, but here you can predefine different uh, header types. Again, with the same story with the sills. 
Um, if you want, you can add uh, trimmers and predefine the rule for adding the trimmers from the seal to header or from the seal to the top plate and, and so on. And with the other offsets, you can also add uh, top or bottom trimmer studs um, and, and so on. So all these settings you can predefine and save under your own name and uh, all these settings will be saved for the future projects. At the same time, you can predefine the connection between windows and between doors. Let's say if uh, two windows, they are close together, you can predefine totally different configuration between, between the windows which are close together or between the window and, and the door. Uh, then it's very simple. You just need to predefine the corners. So in this case, it's L connection. Uh, you just need to predefine and select the L connection or uh, butt connection or internal corners because the tool will automatically define if the con corner is internal or if, ex if it is external. Uh, then there are free end connections, different types. Uh, then we have created also and added into the new World Plus version uh, more options with the uh, V connections. So there are again different types of uh, V connections which you can just select uh, here from this dialog. Uh, then T connections and uh, then we have possibilities to predefine different bridging, snoggings and blockings um, and in this case um, as you can see uh, from, uh, uh, from my uh, sample from my sample um, wall uh, we have automatically added a top header plate um, for, the, for the windows which are on the structural wall uh, with such distance from the top and it will go only through the windows. Again, this is a new feature in, in the new World Plus version. We add the possibility to automatically uh, the tool can find if uh, the bridging should be placed around or above the only the windows or only uh, above the doors, for example, or it can go through the wall. Uh, or through accept openings and so on. So there are different tools where you can say where exactly the bridging should be added. Um, and uh, in this case, um, you can predefine uh, totally different configurations and totally different tools for placing um, your selected headers uh, above um, uh, some different openings. Okay, uh, then there are settings for the secondary bridging, blocking and logging, then for the for diagonal bracings uh, and for adding additional studs, additional bridgings, um, adding additional details. Again, with details, it's again very simple because you can just choose the family. In this case, it's um, anchor, uh, which is automatically inserted um, in the center between two studs. So in the same scenario we can see here, so it's the anchor is automatically added uh, in the center between two uh, studs and it will be added on the top face of my bottom plate. So that's why we, we see this and we get these anchors here. So uh, in this case you can predefine the rules for adding different uh, connections or service walls and um, additional bridgings or blockings uh, or noggings. So, these settings you can save under your own name and, and um, you, can, you can use or even you can share that with your colleagues. So only one user needs to predefine the settings which go for your company and uh, it can be distributed between, your, uh, between the colleagues. Now, um, if we have such wall, uh, we can add additional elements or we can make um, different changes to, to this, uh, to this um, openings or to, the, to these walls. Let's say we can add additional bridgings or noggings between our selected um, uh, studs. I can predefine the distance from the top or from the bottom and additional bridging or blocking could be added automatically at the same time as, as an additional stud. Um, now, um, after having this frame, we can also go and see uh, how the sheeting is created. Uh, so in this case, uh, there is a separate sheeting configuration where you can predefine the sheeting layouts. So what will be the distances between the sheeting panels? Uh, also, what will be maybe some offsets from the top or from the bottom of the wall? Uh, how you, you are going to, maybe there should be some offsets around the opening uh, in the sheeting and so on. 
and after pressing OK, in the beginning actually I will reset the sheeting, so in the beginning it looks like this, there is one sheeting, sheeting panel, uh, but after splitting the sheeting parts you just need to select uh, one frame from the wall and the tool automatically will split uh, the sheeting into the segments. And now through the properties we can see that uh, um, we have the sheeting but it is already split according to the according to the segments. And then uh, in the last stage uh, you have to predefine uh, shop drawings. So with the shop drawing configuration you just need to predefine what kind of, of views you would like to get from, from this wall. So in this case I'm going to, I'm saying that uh, the 3D view should be created uh, automatically with uh, all frames and I'm going to use this view template uh, for the 3D view then uh, we're going to create a plan view with uh, such view templates. So actually the view templates, it's very simple because it comes from your project. You can predefine your own view templates with your own graphical design and, and graphical presentment and you can assign these view templates for every view. And actually it's cho your choice, so what kind of views you would like to achieve from this, uh, from this wall. So you just need to predefine the, the views and the schedules which will be automatically generated. In this case I'm going to create a separate schedule for the sheeting, a separate schedule for the mainframe, then uh, for the material takeoff and the total will be in the part list. Then you just need to choose the title block, uh, the tags, the sample tags which will be used, uh, then you have to predefine dimension types uh, for the horizontal, vertical uh, and uh, elements and for the studs. And after saving this, uh, let's create frame assembly. So I'm going to select again any frame from this wall. And now the tool automatically will generate all needed views and will create assembly. Okay, so this is our 3D view with the main frame. Then this is our front side view with dimensions and with tags so which are automatically added. And here, the final step, what we have to do, you just need to go and say that uh, all these frames should be renumbered. Now the tool automatically will renumber uh, all the frames according to its type and the length. So in this case, it's a vertical stud number one, and this is king stud number one. Uh, so it's, these two vertical studs are the same. They are under the number one because they are the same, under the same type and under the same length. So they are identical. Actually, these two stats are identical, so that's why they have the same numbers. But every bottom cripples, top cripples, they automatically renumber it. And again, let's check, check the front side view with the sheeting, the sheeting panels. Um, and uh, at the same time, we have everything. We have a part list with uh, all the plate stats and the sheeting panels, or we have a separate schedules uh, only for, for the frame. So here we have the length, here we have the uh, mass. Uh, the mass is also automatically calculated according to the material density and the volume. So that's why we, 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 uh, we are sure and we know what, what is the mass or the weight of this frame. And here uh, there is a separate uh, schedule for, for the sheeting panels. And everything could be automatic, could be added into the sheet and automatically generated uh, for uh, other views. Okay, so I'm going to switch back to original view. So, so this is a um, quick and very simple example of the total workflow uh, of the wall plus. Now uh, let's switch to the more complex project, to the real project, to the, to the real model. And uh, here let's uh, take a look into this wall. And here we have totally different scenario. Uh, here we have more complex wall with uh, a lot of different layers. Uh, here uh, we're going to add the main frame, then there will be vertical nailers, then there will be horizontal nailers, then there will be vertical sidings, and then we're going to add um, external decoration on top of the vertical sidings. And from the internal side there will be a secondary frame and there will be two sheetings from, from one side. So as you can see this is more complex uh, situation and, and more complex scenario. And now let's 
take a look into the configuration but before that I'm going to switch my configuration to uh, to the new one to, to the one which is more complex and let's um, take a look into the uh, wall link so this is more complex wall link where I'm mapping my uh, walls uh, my wall layers together with a, a more complex framing configurations and now um, I'm going to select uh, several walls from this project. Okay, and now let's frame these walls. So there are five walls and the tool is going to frame these five walls automatically according to predefined uh, configuration settings. And the tool will put this main frame into the layer where it should be. So it will, it will put it um, into the main layer. At the same time, the tool will uh, analyze and, and will uh, make different uh, connections because the tool will identify if the corner is external corner of the, or if the corner is internal corner and automatically the tool will frame these corners differently. Okay, so we're finishing, yeah, we have finished with framing these five walls. Um, maybe, you know, I will make um, a section view for we could see this, uh, these frames better. Okay. Okay, so we have the main frame and it's added into the layer where it should be. Uh, we have the corners, um, external and internal corners, which are framed differently. Um, and uh, we have really nice looking uh, frames around uh, windows and um, the, in the connection between uh, two windows. Uh, okay, and um, uh, at the same time there is a connection between the window and the door. Okay, which is also quite complex uh, in this case. And now next, uh, let's add other layers, but in this case, um, maybe let's um, add it automatically because we need to add the nailers and the sidings. Um, here, uh, we will wait a little bit more because um, I'm going to show you the feature which will frame all other layers um, in this wall automatically because you can put them and you can frame them separately I mean you can add separately like a secondary frame and separately the nailers and separately the the sidings but with this option uh, the tool automatically will frame all layers so it means that uh, it will add all other layers so automatically and the nailers and the sidings and the secondary frame so I have selected uh, three walls but there will be 15 layers which will be added automatically. So the tool will add uh, the secondary frames and the nailers and two, two layers of the nailers and uh, two layers of uh, sidings. So in this case in the one wall there are five additional layers which will be framed and I have selected three walls so that's why we have totally we have 15 layers. And in one side of the building, there will be scenario with the um, horizontal sidings and vertical nailers. I'm sorry, with the uh, horizontal nailers and vertical sidings. And in another side of the building, there will be um, scenario with vertical nailers and horizontal sidings. So there will be opposite uh, scenarios. At the same time, the tool automatically will align uh, the secondary frame studs with the main frame and uh, uh, the nailers uh, with vertical nailers with the, with the main frame studs. Uh, you will not need to waste your time and align them later manually. I mean, it will be automatic process. 
you can imagine how much time it would take uh, if we would try to do this manually because uh, using the plane rabbit you would need to add these frames and the studs and everything manually one by one and here you just need to predefine the configuration and load the process mm -hmm. Okay, and we are finishing with framing uh, these three walls. Okay, and that's it. We have these frames here and we, you can see uh, how it looks and, and how the corners um, how, how the corners looks like and um, uh, if we would look into this um, window framing uh, we have really nice looking details like uh, waterproof which is below the window and uh, uh, these two windows they are fully framed. Um, the same, let's take a look into another side. Uh, here we have vertical sidings. Okay, and uh, here we have a um, totally different scenario uh, in the corners. And um, uh, we have horizontal, uh, horizontal nailers in, in, this, in this case. Um, as you can see, uh, this bottom uh, plate is split. Also automatically we added such option uh, if we go to the modify uh, wall framing uh, we added possibility to uh, split uh, these plates automatically uh, so this will allow us to uh, predefine uh, um, uh, the settings for the splitting the plates automatically which are below the main uh, which are below the main frame and we're saying that um, the a plate should be automatically split with a second stud. So that's why we, we get uh, such connection in the corner. Yeah, so we are going to update uh, this secondary frame. Actually, there was no need to update the secondary frame. I just pressed uh, by accident <laughs> because I didn't didn't make any changes. Okay. And now, uh, after framing these walls, uh, we can um, uh, again we can continue with the sheeting. Um, I'm going to um, uh, show parts option. Um, and originally, uh, as you can see, there should be two sheeting layers from one side. Uh, so again, you just need to go to the split sheeting parts, select any frame from the wall, and the tool automatically will delete all other uh, parts which are not necessary and will split uh, the sheeting segments. Okay, so we have here the sheeting panels which are automatically split. And uh, the same let's do for another side of the wall. Okay, and we have again totally different scenario for the sheeting. And now uh, let's make shop drawings. So again, um, I'm going to check shop drawing configuration. So it's a totally different, different uh, configuration with uh, different layers because there are more layers. So that's why uh, here we have more views which we'd like to achieve. There will be a separate view for the nailers and separate view for the, for the main frames. And now let's uh, create frame assembly. So in this case, there will be 
a lot of different views because uh, there are um, many layers in this wall. Uh, so we're going to achieve uh, different views with um, uh, different uh, dimensions and and with tags and uh, a lot of different uh, schedules. So again, uh, if you would have and if you would like to make uh, assembly. Um, um, which is um, uh, we would like to make shape drawings manually using Revit. Again, we would need to do that uh, manually uh, and we would need to add these uh, dimensions manually one by one. And here again, it's automatical process. Just in the end, you have to press sort through the framing by mark and that will again automatically will, will renumber uh, all the frames in every view. Okay, and then we have um, the, the view with the nailers, uh, uh, maybe a separate view with the sidings, uh, uh, maybe the, some total maybe view, and then separate shadows uh, for every element. And finally, we can put um, everything into the uh, final uh, sheet. Yes, here I'm going to put... Um, the schedule with um, a framing part list and maybe a separate part list only for the nailers. So after making the first sheet we can go back to the shoot drawing configuration and we can say that this sheet will be used as a template uh, for the for the next um, assemblies and uh, now let's do the same for the second wall. So I'm going to create again assembly for another wall. So in this case the tool again will create the same views but at the same time the, the tool will put these views into the final sheet. So we will not need just to drag them manually anymore. You just need to predefine the one sheet and uh, all other views will be automatically added into the sheet. Yes, so we're finishing uh, with creating shape drawings for the second wall and we can just go directly into the sheet and, and we can see results for our second wall. Okay, and uh, now maybe I will move the section box um, for you, you could see the final result with um, with a frame, just I'm going to show the original view. Uh, one more thing I would like to show that um, if windows that are close together, uh, the tool automatically will put, uh, can put uh, a one header or a one sill um, above uh, two openings if needed. So again, it's kind of um, uh, possibility to join uh, several um, walls, uh, I mean several windows if they are close together. Okay, and uh, now let's switch to one more example. Okay, and here I'm going to again change my configuration to again totally different framing configurations. Um, and here as you see one more example with um, quite complex actual example uh, with uh, a lot of different layers but uh, the corners and uh, the main configuration again it, it has its own settings uh, some custom settings where uh, you can just predefine and see that it's a little bit different framing scenario than in you know, the previous project and uh, here we have uh, such kind of type of uh, top cripples and then um, uh, the frames, the horizontal uh, secondary frame, uh, it's automatically extended. And if we would go to the 
configurable joint configuration. As you can see, it's a kind of complex uh, uh, connection we use here. And um, also there is a split and uh, we see we have an extension uh, from, from the end of the corner. Okay, and um, so it's a little bit different scenario of framing. And uh, now let's just take a look into the main frame. A separate view with the main frame. We can automatically uh, frame these walls as usual. So it's the same processes and the same workflow, but with a little bit different uh, configuration, with a lot of a little bit different uh, scenarios. Okay. Then let's check a look. Let's take a look into the uh, frame with nailers. So there are uh, two nailer layers in this case. And um, it's really complex um, situation where the nailers, they are split in the corners. Okay, and, and again, there is one more insulation uh, nailers added automatically. Uh, then here we have the main frame with the secondary uh, framing, which is inside. Um, again, with some extension from the wall ends. Then uh, one more example with um, one more view with the main frame and the secondary frame and the nailers. And then a separate view with the, with the nailers. And finally the sidings. So it's uh, situation and um, separate view with, uh, with the nailers and, uh, and the sidings with vertical, in this case it's vertical sidings. Yes, and, and this is the final result. Uh, what what we have in in this situation? Okay, so I'm coming back into my slides, and uh, I would like to make an overview of the main features which we added into the new World Plus version. Uh, so we added possibility to control the framing ends, and they could be built in place elements uh, which can be automatically split into the corners we need. Uh, then we added one more feature where you can uh, uh, automatically predefine really complex uh, view connections. Um, as you can see, there are a few examples uh, in, in the slide where you can just uh, draw and have uh, really complex uh, view connections in, in the corners. Uh, then we added possibility to split top and bottom plates automatically. Uh, then we added possibility to um, add grid symbols into the assembly views because some of our customers, they needed to show uh, grids in the assembly and actually with the plane drive it, you can't add the grid into the assembly view. So that's why we added possibility, we added such new feature to present a real grid from the plan view to the assembly view. Uh, then we added possibility to predefine this the family for the second bottom plate. So you can have even such complex bottom plates. Uh, then we added possibility to um, uh, add short vertical noggings together with the, with the horizontal nailers. Uh, then we added a new header type. Um, as you can see, there are gaps between, uh, between these horizontal um, uh, elements. Then we added new uh, connection types, so it's like T connection types. Then we added possibility which automatically aligns um, all other layers with the main frame. So for example, like the nailers or the secondary uh, framings. Uh, then we added possibility uh, what to do with uh, stats if they collide. So for example, if we will move the door into, into the corner, what to do with the stats? I mean, it should be deleted or it should be moved. So we added such option to control um, our stats when they collide. And then, um, again, one more example with kinks. So let's say if a door moves and, and, and meets uh, another stat, so what to do and what to do in the corners. Uh, then we added possibility to predefine different configuration locations. So, for example, like you have, like in my case today, I I used uh, three different configurations for different three different systems. 
but also you can put and you can have one configuration which is your own configuration and another configuration could be shared and, and shared with the with the colleagues. And then we added possibility to support uh, curt walls. Um, um, so these are the main features which we added into the new uh, wall plus versions and you will be able to read more about uh, new features in our latest uh, blog posts. Okay, and um, wall plus you can download from the tools from BIM Doc. Uh, this is um, a manager uh, of applications. Uh, which we own, uh, so it's very intuitive and uh, very easy to use and you will be always updated. So for the ones who already own WallPlus, you're welcome to update uh, this version. You, you will be able to see these red bubbles um, together with the tool and you will be able to read uh, what's new in this version and you will be able to update this product uh, in your computer. Okay, so Tools for BIM Doc, it allows you to um, be sure that you always use the latest uh, version of the product and uh, to know uh, what are the new features. And it's very easy to get the trial of the Wall Plus. You can just go directly into the Wall Plus, uh, just press on Get Trial, fill the form, and you will be automatically provided with activation code for uh, two weeks. Okay, and also uh, every our tool has an e-help in the end where you can find uh, detailed instructions how to use the product. Uh, also, you can find uh, uh, sample videos and detailed uh, technical documentation. Okay, and there is a link uh, where you can download our tools for BIM Doc. Okay, thank you, Renata. Thank you. Eh, jag, vill tacka, eh, jag vill tacka alla deltagarna idag. Jag vill säga ett par ord och det är att eh, vi visade flera av eh, de här produkterna på vårt frukostseminarie. Och är ni mer nyfikna så kommer vi visa ytterligare produkter eller, och en, samma produkter på vårt seminarie. Så ni är välkomna att kika på vår hemsida för när det här vårsomenariet kommer att äga rum, det blir i maj. Och vi kommer att fördjupa vårt samarbete med våra samarbetspartners Agacad. Så som återförsäljare så kommer Tools for BIM dock att inneha vårt, vår logga istället för Agacad i framtiden. Så prova jättegärna den här, de här produkterna genom att ladda ner testversion från Agacads hemsida tills vidare. Har ni frågor så kontaktar ni AAC via sig.ac.se och så kan ni läsa mer om produkterna både på vår hemsida och på Agricals hemsida. Och glöm inte att ladda ner handouts från den här webbinaren och det hittar ni i GoToWebinarfältet. Tack så mycket för idag. Hej då. Bye bye. Tack. Bye bye.